Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to go back to the Second World War and I've got here on the table a member of the Deutsche Afrika Corps. Now these guys, during sort of 1940, late 1940 through to 1943, were one of the most feared military forces on the planet, and with good reason. They were well led, they had excellent equipment, and they were a highly motivated troop. So they were something to really be worried about. Now this fellow I've got with me, he's from Perry Miniatures. And as with most of their models, he's a slightly more realistic scale than you'll see in a lot of other sort of producers in this size, this 28mm figure size. As well, they're one of the few producers who do good stuff in plastic for this era, and specifically these uh, Africa Core. And they were great, if you remember, we've got as well the Perry 8th Army. So these are scaled perfectly to one another. Good reason to sort of look into these guys. So I've started off with a base coat, I've given him a spray of Desert Yellow from Army Painter, and then over the top of that, I've just given him a quick blast of Desert Yellow out of the pot. That's just there to make sure that this base coat is sort of even, and gives us a nice solid colour to work from. Now we're going to then go ahead, I've got Green Ochre, and that is going to go over his helmet, and the canister for his gas cape that he's got on his back here. His tunic I'm going to do with Russian Uniform. And the reason for this is when you're out in the desert sun, uh, these uniforms sort of bleached and got very bright very, very quickly. So there's a little bit of play around you can do with some of the colors here. Another good one, if you've got a different sort of style tunic that you want to stand out, you know, mix up the colors a little because supply and what have you, uh, you could also use yellow green as a good swap in for that. Just something to consider as another Vallejo color. I'm going to do his bread bag here, that little satchel thing on his back. Camouflage beige, German camo beige. Dark sand will be his webbing and all the strap on his gun here. Flat brown for his gun, like I always do. And then leather brown will be his boots. And there are a couple of little pouches that would still be leather. So I'm going to paint those up with the right colors for that. Anything else as we get to it, we'll just touch up as we go. So first things first, since I've already gone over and given him that uh, desert yellow to touch everything else up, we'll go straight to his tunic and we're going to do Russian uniform for that. Now with this Russian uniform, because the desert yellow underneath is quite a bright base coat, you may find you need to come back and do a second coat of this. But all this is, is just going around and making sure that his whole jacket is Russian uniform. So paint that on and we'll come back and see how that looks once it's done. Now after that second coat of Russian uniform, I've got here my green ochre and I'm just going to go around and touch up the helmet and that uh, gas canister on the, well, gas mask canister on the back there. This is also a good point to get your Cadian flesh tone and just go over any exposed skin. With this, again, you might need two thin coats. Now while that's drying, let's get some uh, flat brown on his water bottle, and we'll do his rifle at the same time. Now this top half of the water bottle was actually sort of a tin metallic color. What I'm going to do is when I come back to do the highlights on the gun, we'll fill that in with a little bit of metallic and that'll look fine. But for the time being, I'm just going to do it in with this flat brown at the same time as everything else. So after that, we're going to move on and I've got, what is this? Camo beige. In camo beige, we're going to go on to this uh, bread bag thing, and we'll do the entrenching tool at the same time. Now we'll just do some dark sand on this webbing and straps. Just remember that those pouches on the front tended to be leather, so we'll save those for later. Now as always with these really light colors, you might need to come back and do, oh dear, <laughs> a second coat of these. Now as I was putting on that dark sand, I was getting it everywhere. <laughs> I could not manage to keep it on the webbing. I don't know what's up with my hands today. But here's one of the bonuses to using straight colors out of the pot for your base coats. In that, it was super easy to tidy up. Okay, So I've got here next of all the leather brown. And I'm going to do boots. And there's a couple of leather straps and those pouches just on the front of them here. So I'm going to do those now. And again, if I make any mistakes, I can just use my base coat straight out of the pot and tidy up. And then for our last base coat, just any black details, fill them in black. You can use any old black you like for this one. As ever, I'll recommend Vallejo's uh, flat black or normal black because it covers so well. 
Now those base coats are all applied, he's almost ready for his wash. Now, just a quick note, if you're doing anybody who's got those uh, side caps, you can go ahead, uh, just a little bit of dark sand will do that quite nicely. But what we're going to do now is I've got my Agrax Earth Shade here, and same as always, just going to load up my brush and get crazy with it. Just start bucketing this on the model. Now you do want to move it around a fair bit. You don't really want this one to pull too much anywhere because with this one, rather than some of the other ways that I like to use Agrax Earth Shade, we're really looking for it to just give us that shading and not do too much in the way of staining the color of the miniature. Now that that's almost dried, we can get straight into highlighting. So I'm going to go for his helmet, those bits that we did green ochre. I'm going to go and very lightly do the edges in dark sand. So not too much of this because you'll find out that it will very quickly overpower these. But just a little gives you a nice hard edge. Now it'll look quite bright going on, but it does darken down a little bit as it dries. But still, take your time and don't go crazy with it, because you're really just looking to bring up that extreme edge. A little bit across the top doesn't hurt either. Now I've got here a little Citadel Ushanti bone just to do the edges of his trousers. And you want to be fairly sparing with this too. The idea is you just want to catch those extreme edges where the light is going to hit the folds in his clothing. So don't go crazy with this because otherwise it's going to look kind of similar to the helmets. But this is a slightly different tone for the highlights, so it will look a little bit different. His webbing will quickly touch with a little bit of Iraqi sand. And I've gone way overboard on the edge there. Whoops. <laughs> This is Nurgling Green, and it's quite a sharp green highlight for what we're going to do on the tunic. But it will chill out a little bit once it dries down. And the important part with this too is that it's got quite a nice sort of faded effect to it. So this looks good if you're painting guys who you want to represent veterans, and their stuff's been out in the sun for a while. Now if you want to make your own highlight, then a mix of sort of dark sand and Russian uniform will work well in this place. Now I did mention that it'd be quite a sharp highlight, didn't I? <laughs> so you want to be fairly sparing with it, if I'm honest. Um, and I probably could have watered that down a little bit more. But not to worry, this will look fine when he's on the table. So quickly, I've got some Kislev flesh, and I'm going to highlight his skin. It doesn't take too much. Especially with these Perry miniatures, you want to be fairly sort of impressionistic. Just do cheeks, noses, chins, that sort of stuff. Now, if you're looking for a way to paint the leather, just a little bit of Gawthor Brown is a good choice for this one. It's a nice warm tone, and it looks a little bit sun bleached, so we're going to use that just to go around and edge these leather pouches. I'm not going to bother with his boots, though, because when I base him, yeah, I'm going to get plenty of those over the edges of his boots anyway. You won't see those details. Then finally, just a smidgen of metallic, whatever dark sort of metallic color you like to use, just to edge off some of these details on the weapon. And there we have it, one soldier of the Africa Corps complete. Now we had a stripe around his wrist there too, which I've gone and filled in with a little bit of screaming skull, rather than a pure white, and he's ready to rock and roll. As you can see, it's not the most fantastic paint job out there, but it's got everything you need to look good on the table, I think. What I'm gonna do now is base him up, and you can see how that all looks in context. But as ever, guys, if there's anything that you found useful there or any questions you might have, just drop them into the comments below. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.